kid. Good to see you again, kid. <laughs> Why are you saying it like that? I'm excited to get old, because then I can call everyone. I'll be like, hey, kid, good to see you again, kid. But I'm your kid. wife, and I'm only two years younger than you. Okay, but wouldn't it be funny, though, if I was like, good, good to see you again, kid. Where's your timer? What? Where's oh, your... I didn't set a timer. It's fine. I know what time it is. You gonna set a timer? Um, hey, Weezy, how's it going? It's good. How are you? I'm all right. I'm okay. You said you want to talk about mustaches? Well, here's the thing. Mm -hmm. Is you disappear, right? And then you come home mm -hmm. and you get in the shower. Say nothing I'm to working. No say nothing I'm, I'm to working. nobody. I'm plugging. Say I'm, nothing to nobody. Say nothing to nobody. I'm working away. Uh-huh. And then I see you after. Uh-huh. And you're clean shaven, which you haven't been for a week. Okay. And your hair's cut. Which was long overdue. Makes you wonder what happened. Especially because you know that I was previously a gymnastics class. So last you saw me, I said, so long, I'm heading to a gymnastics class. And I'm, well, and I'm, and when I returned, I'm, I'm working. And when I returned, you, you noticed that my hair was shorter and I had no facial hair. That's what you noticed. Those That's are what things. I noticed. And it raised the question for me of... Did I flip? Yes. At the gymnastics class. I did. Class. Do a flip. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you very front, much. Front or back? Pr well, front, and I did, so they have uh, they have tools to help you do a back handspring. Uh-huh. So I, I to use the tool to do that, yes. Um, but I am working on my forward tuck. I don't know what it's called. It's, it was worse than last time, to oh. answer your next question. Yes, I seem to be regressing in skill. Um, but that's all progress, well, I guess. Congratulations to you. It ain't progress without regress. It got me thinking, though, about the things that we do to appeal to our partners, you know, appearance wise, and things mm -hmm. that we do just for ourselves. Yeah. And the, clearly, that was not something that you did for me. Why? Why would you think that? Because you did it on the eve of us going to RTX. Yeah, but here's the thing. So you, you interpret that as me saying, like, oh, I'm doing it for RTX. No. I actually, if I'm going to be taking photos with people or meeting people, I want them to see me at my worst. Most disheveled, most probably sweaty, tired, all this they stuff. They will, anyway, because it's going to be so hot in but, Austin. But it is purely an issue of time. I There's a threshold on it, right? So, like, where I was with my scruffiness... Mm-hmm. It probably could have lasted maybe another 24, 48 hours. Sure. But... But beyond what you... The limits you usually push. But it's yeah. not like I'm going to get a haircut while we're doing that. We probably won't even have time to do that. So that means that I would have to wait until uh, we return for me to be able to take any of that action. And that... Well, that so it was, it was just a matter of convenience. It's okay because I think mostly women do not do things... To oh. impress other, to impress men. I thought you were going to say or, find men attractive. No, they, oh, we're not doing things to impress men or women or well, no, okay. we're not. Let's dig in. We're not doing things to impress our uh, romantic partners. We're okay. doing things for ourselves. Yeah. Um, and that's what a good supportive romantic also, partner like, finds attractive. When I like get dressed or do something, I want like. I want my girls to be like, oh, you're looking good. You're looking good. Yeah. You know? Those boots go all the way up. <laughs> Stuff like that, you know? Things like that. Yeah, I get that. Well, yeah, so let's unpack. OTK, OTK. Let's unpack I, attraction. I, I saw someone use the abbreviation OTK uh -huh. the other day, and it stood for, I was like, what is that? And it was over the knee boots. OTK. Is that the only thing it stands for? I don't know. I don't know now. Now you've got me wondering if it stands for something else. I also got a haircut and you didn't say anything about it. Well, it doesn't count if you're cutting it yourself. <laughs> this is with the... <laughs> with scissors that we also use to open packages of sealed meat. No, I don't use the I didn't use the meat scissors. I used my sewing scissors. Which are the scissors that I don't really sew. I do a basic stitch if needed. But they are the scissors that I keep in the little pouch where I keep any kind of like needles or thread or stuff but yes yes they are not hair trimming scissors no mm -hmm. 
And yes, I have cut my hair four times within the last week and a half. Because my hair was just like wildly long. It mm-hmm. still is pretty long. Mm-hmm. And each time I've cut it, it's been about an inch to an or an inch or half an inch um, that I've cut off. But I just, I just am like, I'm so over it. And have you considered a Captain Marvel cut? <sighs> no, I can I couldn't pull that off. You don't think you could pull it no, off? No, I, I couldn't. You've had your hair pretty short before. I have, but I, I not like that. I'm, I'm, well, it's, it's not. I'm not also, it's about Cap- how you can how you get your girls, right? Because sure. you said that's what it's about. I'm not even convinced Captain Marvel can entirely pull that off. You mean Brie Larson? Brie Larson, who is beautiful, mm-hmm. of course. Yeah. But she, like me, has a, a square jaw. She doesn't do it for you. She does it for her gals. <laughs> She's gorgeous, mm-hmm. though. So what you're saying, you're, the theory that we're unpacking today, is that no one's attracted to anyone. No, they're, no. We're all flexing for ourselves. We should be. We should be flexing sure. for ourselves. Yeah, sure. Because confidence is very attractive. Like how confidently you trim your hair with garden shears. Wait, are you saying me don't even need to be beautiful? Just radiate? Can I be this? Can I have this? <laughs> um, no, it's interesting. Well, because, you know, um, well, mustache is... Uh, His is, name's Patrick. Okay, I wasn't going to talk about Patrick, but mustache <laughs> That's is what we call him around the office. Synonymous. Say, hey, mustache. With uh, with masculinity, okay? But you, heavens no. God forbid I grow out my facial hair. You won't even, you won't uh, come no, near I, me. I just don't, I just don't, I think you look better with a clean shaven face. Well, you've told me you think I would look better completely hairless. Like, like a uh, mustache, no, no mustache, no, no eyebrows, nothing, right? You, you call it the Dean Norris. That's what you <laughs> want me to have. <laughs> For people watching, listening, Dean Norris is the brother-in-law from the show Breaking Bad. Everyone knows that. No one knows who Dean Norris is. Dean Norris is also one of the security guards in the opening sequence from the film Jet Li's The One. Which you recently watched. Which I recently watched. But, But there's a ton of things that people do that don't necessarily, you know... I mean, I exercise. I don't think you care at all about muscles. I do. I mean, I... I, I think you appreciate you. the fact that that's not you. By the way, you completely confirmed everything when you said I support <laughs> you. I support I'm you. I'm attracted to you with the muscles. No, but I think that I think that you're attracted to the fact that I can carry your luggage up and down stairs. No, untrue. I'm attracted to your physique. Um, I don't know. But I would be attracted to you if you didn't have the muscles. Well, that's that's also a mistake. You shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Um, because you shouldn't. Are there things that I do to be attractive that you like? I liked when I saw that your feet were on the table yesterday (laughs) and they were filthy. (laughs) I thought that was pretty attractive. (laughs) They were pretty dirty. Yeah, they were pretty dirty. Because I had walked on your gym mat, which was very dirty. Mm -hmm. Let the record show. Yeah. Which it was funny because I was like, why are your feet on the table? And they're filthy. And you were like, if you cleaned your gym, this wouldn't happen. And I was like, I was like, the cleaning of my gym has nothing to do with where your feet are now. (laughs) Are you calling me out in public like this? Mm -hmm. Um, What other things? What other things that do you think people do uh, to make themselves attractive? Well, sometimes when we're going out somewhere and maybe it's a unique scenario, you'll you'll put on a little button up collared shirt. Mm -hmm. Probably one that I purchase for you but even in that scenario you're like you should do more buttons why you got so many why are your buttons down your belly buttons you do do a low button it's called a belly button for a reason because that's where you're allowed to measure it too that's how you know you do you like a low button on a button-up shirt it's because and you show a lot of chest hair i don't have that much chest hair but the reason is because if i button across my chest people make the way shirts are made, so I'm hol- I'm holding up my fingers in like an oval shape. This is the way the torso of a shirt is made, like this. That isn't how my torso is shaped. It's triangular. My my torso is much thicker at the top, and then it gets smaller. It's two tubes. <laughs> it's a, it's like a my torso is shaped in the exact same shape as a elevated rotating restaurant, right? One large thing at the top attached to a tube. 
that goes all the way down. Yeah, and, and you do get you get the slim fit shirts. So that yeah. way it's it's more to conducive because, to that well, fit. Because well, sh- yeah. But what you need is you need a size up in the shim in the slim fit shirt, but still you wear the smaller. Well, size. I need a size up, but then I need someone to take it in underneath the point. You could get your shirts tailored. I would just, I would support that. I'm paying for that. I don't know. You gotta find a guy named Taylor now. But you, because you don't care about impressing me, because you think your confidence that radiates is gonna be what. Well, no, I'm giving you everything that you like, which is my muscles, which you. Well, what could stated. I do? What could I do more, to. To for me attract- to find you to more attractive. attractive to you. Quit picking on me. <laughs> <laughs> Number one. Okay, let me live my life without trying to button button my buttons up. Uh. uh- I do let you live your life. You're a man that goes to gymnastics at 3 p.m. on a Wednesday while I'm working hard. That's a man living his life. That sounds more like a woman who really loves doing a uh, podcast about morbidity that requires a lot of her time to write the scripts to do that stuff because she really is very diligent about the details that are contained within said podcast and she wants to make sure it's very entertaining and that everything's there so that way when she records the episode people will really enjoy it and see the work that went into it. I'm a hard worker, yes. I'm not. Is that attractive? <laughs> is, is that attractive to you? How, how hard it, I work? It, it is, it is. It is attractive to me, but I think there are tom- sometimes where I wish you would just play with the toys with me, you know? Like, where I would go like, hey, quit working on your stuff, and, and let's play with toys. <laughs> but I find it. ambition attractive. Uh-huh. Yeah. And yet... <laughs> and yet... What would you say, if you had to pick one, mm-hmm. I either had ambition or humor, what would it be? So I can only have one, not a percentage. So I'm poor, but you're making jokes. Ambition has nothing to do with wealth. I do think there's that tons if of you rich have people that amb- have no ambition. Sure, sure. If you inherited wealth, yeah. But I do think that a lot of wealth originates. The genesis is ambition. What about a lottery winner. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's that's a was anomaly. it ambition for them to circle the eight well, I guess or whatever? They were ambitious enough to get the tickets and play, unless or it naive. was an exception. Because human beings don't have a concept. Would you rather odds. I have humor or ambition? Uh, humor, humor for sure. Because then we'd have more time to play. <laughs> we do lots of fun stuff. Yesterday we played soccer. In the evening, yeah, we yeah. went to the park. We played soccer. soccer. We got out there, kicked the kicked the ball around pretty good. You hurt your ankle, hurt your knee. <laughs> it yeah. was like in two. It was in two. You you went you went. Oh god, my ankle! Uh, and then you were walking it off because you're tough. And then and then in the next kick you went. Oh my knee! <laughs> yeah, because I have. Well, be, it, part of it was because when I stopped the ball, it twisted my twisted my knee. I I need to. I need to th- realize that I'm not. You know, twenty. Or 30. <laughs> uh, I have an ambition to make you laugh, so that counts, right? At my expense. Not necessarily. At I can make expense. fun of myself, too. I probably have a couple times this in the last in the last 15 minutes or so. Yeah, I mean, my, my ankle did hurt throughout the night. Yes. In my, in my, but I feel pretty much like back to normal now. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I sprained my ankle pretty badly in t- summer twenty twenty. Mm-hmm. But it was a situation where because we were work from home, I didn't have to tell anybody because I was only ever seen. Nobody knew from except for me. The, yeah, you knew because I was carrying you up and down the steps. Well, I don't know about that. Um, yeah, I think that is the biggest thing Be- about getting older. That is just really frustrating is that like the thing like when you were a kid you go running and then you trip and fall unabashedly you trip yeah. and fall and then you're just covered in scrapes and bruises but your body doesn't yeah you care. walk it off but in when you're older no matter the the state of you okay some people are way feel way older mm-hmm. when they're in their late 30s than other people do but no matter what that is you like brush your teeth and throw out your back which i did once which you did i did once. Ac- yeah. ac- actually do once i would love to join a recreational just for, for fun soccer league mm-hmm. out here but it does come with the consequence of hurting 
myself. Well, also, but. the problem, too, is you and I are in an age demographic where you're just kind of in the adult. Yeah. But that can mean anything. Yeah. And, and so then there's a certain aspect of you, which is like, oh, I'd love to play soccer. That'd be fun. Now, of course, you're not going to be playing against 16-year-olds, but adult could be anything. And this, because this happens to me with gymnastics, where I'm in an adult class, so I don't have to worry about children. But that doesn't mean that a 23-year-old isn't going to flip a hundred times, you know. They're not probably not going to the Olympics because they've aged out. Yeah. But it doesn't stop them from doing the most impressive things you've ever seen. And I'm like, oh, we're in the same class together. What else could I do to be more attractive? <laughs> Uh, you could get that that height surgery, the one where they take shins. yeah they extend your shins. You know? I do wish I had longer shins. No, you don't. I do. No, you don't. I think it's the sh- that's the part of my body that I wish was longer. <laughs> it's from knee to ankle because I think it's not proportionate. I think I'm proportionate knee to to groin. <laughs> Go on. My torso's fairly long. You always say you have a short torso. No. You describe yourself as no. spider body. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you, so you, your shins are. I you do think wish throwing was... off your proportions. I don't think yeah. so. I have very, very long tibias, and it is, it's not fun. That's a dream. It's not fun. You want some meat down there. You want to have a firm base. Okay. So what else? What else? What else could you do to become more attractive yeah. to me? Uh, I wanted you to own a pair of urban camo pants for some time. Camo? I think camo's out now. Okay, but this isn't about out. This is about what I feel inside my heart. If you, I think if you dress more like a rough rider. You always like when I have some kind of like strange outfit that resembles a superhero. I do like that. Like, I had this one... Or jump... Or or when you're in jumpers, if you look like you could theoretically be climbing out of a cockpit... Yeah. That's good That's look. what you like. Yeah, it's good like, look. Like, I had this one top that it was like a turquoise top, but then it had this print on it with pink and stuff, and you were like, I love that shirt. It mm-hmm. looks like you could be in the X-Men. Mm-hmm. And then you <laughs> threw it away. <laughs> you said, oh, yeah? X-Men this. And you threw it in the garbage. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, what about me? Go hit me with one. Go on. If you can mm-hmm. even think of one. <laughs> I think, um, hmm. You know, you could use a cool pair of sunglasses. Oh, my God. Because we live in Los Angeles. It's very sunny. Keep going. It's very sunny all the time. And I think you're just about to enforce my point here. I've never known you to wear a pair of sunglasses that you didn't get for free. Okay, well, you saw what I grabbed before you were going to finish no. that statement. No, 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 So you not. think I should go spend my hard-earned money, which I did, had no ambition to acquire, <laughs> and, and, and get a cool pair of sunglasses? I just think it's like you go, you what put is in this, the... But is it, is it that you think the sunglasses that I have gotten for free don't... Sh- don't fit my face or the fact that they are all uh ones given away in the new years from the 2000s from the aughts <laughs> is that that you think that, that no i just think it's like you could pick the perfect pair of sunglasses for you and then you don't often wear sunglasses but we live in los angeles you know the sun does damage to your eyes and etc etc that could be said almost anywhere sure los angeles. but yeah right you're right you're right i guess i guess i just have a hard time imagining that this that that me going out and being like this is it the single pair of sunglasses I mean, that are just, for me it shows especially because um, these say top gun on them you know it sh- it would just show a certain level of care that you're putting into your own appearance and sometimes if you want other people to to care about you you need to show that you care about yourself right and we've gotten to the heart of the discussion what does that mean? I want no one to care about me. <laughs> I want people to see me and go, who is that? That looks like the trash heap from uh, Fraggle Rock. Do you think that... Do you think there's a point you could hit where you become too muscular? No. It's not possible. Show me show me a man or woman out there that's ever achieved like you such pers- a thing. You personally, that you could reach a point 
where you are too muscular, it does not suit you, it does not look good, no. it's uncomfortable for the you. The body adapts. <laughs> so based, if, if it was the kind of thing, I see what you're saying, mm. if I was just covered, muscle everywhere, certain things would have to change. My brow would have to thicken, right, to accommodate the added muscle. Neck would have to widen, <laughs> okay? So you look like a Neanderthal. Listen, it happened. It, it's a matter of human adaptation. Kumail Nanjiani, look at his jaw before and after. Yeah. It's because his body is adapting. <laughs> so. Sure. Yeah. Sure. I mean, I think, like, you practice guitar. I do practice and, guitar. And, you know, n- knowing an instrument is a skill. Do you I... find that attractive, though? Because you've never sure. really seemed to care. Well, you've never... You go, keep it down! And then you and then you take a broom and you bang it against the wall. You never... If you were like, I'm going to learn a song for uh-huh. Elise. Like, I'm going to... A song Elise loves, uh-huh. I'm going to learn to play down the guitar for her. That would be that would be very attractive. When A Star Is Born was coming out, I learned to play the song that he... The Shallow that. Song? No, the other song. That what other song? song. You like the other song that he sings when he's in the bar. What song? There's a song in, in. I don't know what you're talking about. It happened, and I did, all of this scenario actually happened. I don't and think I was I, like, I was like, oh, I played this for you. I don't think I like this song. Do people like music from that movie? You uh, like music from that movie. You listen. You listen to that soundtrack constantly. I couldn't even name besides that shallow song. I could not name a song for you. He's, there's there. There's shallow. There's just wanted to get another look at you. <laughs> there's there's uh yeah, i made i made my brother cry that's another song <laughs> oh, no sam elliott um so there's all kinds of songs in that yeah i write songs for you all the time remember when i was like hey Lee, silver sun pickups and then i started <laughs> strumming wildly so in the panic switch <laughs> what else can i do nothing you, you've done it all that's not true you've done it all you, told, you that's not true how can you go from clean your feet to you've done it all well that's the only thing that's why i was so shocked (laughs) so i was so taken aback because that was it that's the that was the last thing do you wish i was more muscular uh yeah i guess so (laughs) just because sometimes you just you know collapse in on myself yeah (laughs) your your weakness takes over i want to know that you could defend yourself or if there was a cave-in you'd be able to dig your way out the only thing that I could see being a real threat in my life is coyotes, which you're not supposed to fight. You're supposed to make yourself big and loud. That's the only thing you could see as a threat? <laughs> you're like a chinchilla. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, the, you, those, those two chinchillas and you have that in common. What? Coyotes are basically nothing. I saw a video the other day of a little baby coyote that got stuck in it. It's a den cave in and then so so the people were trying to help dig the baby coyote out it it had no problem it was like can you get me out here you mind helping me out and they helped dug it out i see yeah so i don't think you have to worry about coyotes i think you're fine what would you perceive my threats to be then uh men (laughs) (laughs) uh yeah that's that's probably the biggest threat i would say um we also, we don't know what's underneath the ocean. There's, you know, as I r- often try to remind you, much of the o- uh, ocean is unexplored. Well, we know some. What is that fish that will essentially attach itself to the other fish? Oh, gosh, what's it called? Well, it, when it's when it's mating and then they just stick on to it for the rest of their lives. What? What the hell is that? Is it... Uh, is, it is this the deep sea fish? It's a deep sea fish, I, I would think. I don't know. I don't know what fish that is. I thought you were going to say That's what you fish. are to me. Yeah. Maybe it is an anglerfish. No, an anglerfish is the one that has the, yeah, the light bulb. Doesn't an anglerfish, when it's mating with its partner, it like attaches to Oh, it? I thought this was a predatory. I thought anglerfish I imagined two other fish attaches. that were mating, and then this fish comes in like a menage a trois, and then, and then gets on to the other fish, and it's like, whoa, I was just trying to bang. Yeah, so for deep sea angler fishes, sex resembles an organ transplant. It's hard to find a partner in the dark depths, so a tiny male angler fish fuses its tissues to a more massive female during mating, allowing the two to share not only sperm but even blood and skin. What? <laughs> so it breaks it, it breaks its 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 uh, 
sexual organs off inside of the other one. <laughs> and it, go, it goes, so long. <laughs> well, no, no, not even more. In four anglerfish species, males attach to the female temporarily, while in the other six species, the fusion is permanent. So, like, for the rest of their lives, they're fused. So you're kind of like my... So the ang- the male anglerfish is really small, is what's happening? I believe so. So you're kind of like my anglerfish. Well, that we already missed that up, because I'm huge. Um, but in this scenario, if I were small, the anglerfish would... It attaches itself, and then it just kind of like sticks to it, because it's not confident that it's going to be able to finish the mating process with enough efficiency. So it just like and now it becomes just floating on the belly of the other anglerfish, just going, I'll try again later. Or does it break <laughs> off a piece? The fish becomes stuck. I'm not an expert. I'm just Come on. We that's a lot of we've broken down a lot of the the rules of attraction. I mean something had to get those two crazy kids together in the first place though. There had to be something. Some chemistry. Well the anglerfish has the little light bulb, so why doesn't it just have another little light dangling off the genitals? And then you're like, I hope I get the right one. <laughs> right? That's so stupid. <laughs> Is there a romantic comedy that you would watch where you would say, like, yes, that person, it's healthy, I would be, you know, it's a health, that's a healthy attraction. Between the two of them? Yeah. Philadelphia. <laughs> I would say. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we're, we're breaking down all of the things. So, like, obviously, you were talking about, like, how sleepless in Seattle. She's, like, stalking him, essentially. And then in uh, You've Got Mail, the unofficial sequel, it, it, he is manipulating her. Once he finds out the truth, he immediately yeah. manipulates her pretty hard. Um, hmm. I'm just hard to think. Uh... Love Potion number nine, of course. About the, Time is a pretty sweet romantic comedy. Oh, About Time. But even that, he's manipulating time, right? He's, like, mm. going through time. I guess she's aware bit. of it It's mostly. no Time Traveler's Wife. Time Traveler's Wife, no. No, that's not okay. <laughs> um, I'm seeing Demolition Man mentioned. Demolition Man is not a romantic comedy. It's a historical documentary mm-hmm. set in the future. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. What Did you have an answer for that when you asked it? Or did you just ask it? Wild card. No. I... I feel like you don't have a good directory of... of uh... I, th- I say you're atypical when it comes to romance. and Maybe that's why. I'm atypical? Yeah, sure. I think so. I would agree. I would agree to that. And would you say that you're typical? When it comes to romance? Is anyone... Is anyone... Some people are. There's people that I feel like I went to high school or college with that, of course, this is how they present themselves online, but when you watch what their life was afterwards, it seemed pretty pretty straightforward. They want the picket fence. They want the guy's night out. Mm-hmm. They want the babies. They want the... Which, none of that's bad. Yeah. It, I guess it is more of just the, like typical uh it's not a romantic comedy but um what is it before suns oh yeah before sunrise two people connecting on a deep level before sunset scene it was like yeah the the before trilogy the before trilogy Mm -hmm. obviously gets more complicated as they go on but i feel like that one is kind of like a like two people have a genuine sure interest in each other and then part ways for the next decade or whatever yeah until they make the sequel and I never saw the third one. Well, but. I don't know if we're... Uh, Did we get to the bottom of it? I, well, I'm just trying to, to to understand why you got this hair. You didn't get this haircut five days ago. Five days ago wasn't this crazy. It wasn't this long. I had, you. The thing is you have to wait. You, with men's hair, the determining factor is rarely the top. It's the sides. Once the sides start creeping over the ears... Cause then it's, cause then it's, it's the time, taking time off. Well, and then you start to look like a child, I think. Oh, a little youthful vibrance, maybe. <laughs> no. Maybe I should have kept it going. No. You look like a child, or you look like you're in a band mm-hmm. from, like, the late 90s. You look like you're a member of Oasis. 
<laughs> they did have those haircuts, didn't they? Isn't it funny how they perceive themselves to be the like next Beatles, like as influential a British band as the Beatles? But then, like, a lot of it was just, like, walking in the footsteps of them. And even they were like, well, we're not going to have hair bobs, but we're going to have messy British hair. And then the Verve walked walked in the footsteps of Oasis. Oh, did they? (laughs) I don't know. I feel like it was around the same time. Well, we didn't really get to the bottom of anything here, but I think your hair looks great. Thank you. I think your hair looks great as well. Thank you. It's been cut four times this week. Mm -hmm. Not this week. Week and a half. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm glad that you got to do the flip. Thank you. I, I again, it was much worse. It was much worse this week. So, mm-hmm. you know, baby steps, small improvements. That's what I say. Uh, I bought you an outfit. It's a uh, it's a skin tight thing, and it gives you a place to store your katanas. Oh, your energy cool, cool, blades cool, cool, in the back. Cool. So hopefully you like it. But there you go. Well. uh... Thanks for Thanks hanging out, everybody. For hanging we got out. to the bottom of this got discussion. Got to the bottom of that. And yeah. uh, Moots Ruin, thank you, thank you so, so much. Uh, guys, just wanted to congratulate Elise on her amazing performance as Clarity on Colock. Great season. Thank you so much. I That was challenging because I don't usually play characters like that. And she was also an established character that everybody really, really hated because she did something pretty... Egregious. She said, she said, let me at it. <laughs> no, I was like, oh, I don't know about this. And I don't know if she ever became fully redeemed, but I don't know if that's the point, if that was the point. But thank you so much. I en- enjoyed doing it a lot, and everybody on that show was really, really great. And it was definitely a- a really impressive, and I I uh, encourage everyone to go and check it out, because you can now watch all of Kolok the whole season, and... Uh, and then if you want even more RPGs, watch The Fun House Must Be Dice. Yeah. Two. Blas uh, Armelin, thank you so much. How's the kiwi plant? Shout out from Buenos Aires. It's thank thirsty. You. So thirsty. It's still still wildly, wildly out of control. Yeah. The kiwi plant is... Uh, we have a lot of fun checking it. But every single day is a, is a nightmare. Yeah. It's terrifying. And James has to water it a lot. Yeah. A lot. So... But it's doing well. Mm-hmm. Still no fruit. We might. Someone suge- was it Erica suggest getting an arch for it. Yeah. Or maybe Anna. Somebody That's suggested. That's a big commitment, though. Yeah. To grow. Where are we her. supposed to put an arch? Um, Pro Fera, I love you guys. Hope you're doing well. Big fans of both your comedy styles. Uh, thanks for the years of laughs, Wheezy and Jimmy. Is that me, Jimmy? Does Lee still eat the bread crust? It's still the best part of the bread. I'm sorry. This whole like the center of the bread is the best part it's not the crust is the flavorful part the bread is this like spongy bleh. Bleh. you know that's fine i'll clean up your mess <laughs> <laughs> clean up your mess mr pipes 4000 thank you just thank you that's thank it. you just mr thank pipes you. thank you mr pipes um mr. yeah pipes. these these are fun to do we we have no idea what we're going to talk about when we start talking but i feel like we we can Got always make something of out of it. Maybe a little confrontational. You're coming at me real hard with some of these uh, accusations and, of course, downplaying my musculature. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we're going to try and do this regularly because these are a lot of fun. And we appreciate you guys hanging out, sticking around. It's just 30 minutes of your time. Oh, Kathy B., thank you so much. Kathy James, everyone needs to know where you got your pants. These are actually, I think, YouTube pants. They were. They were free pants from YouTube. YouTube sent me pants. So, uh... These are they. And there is a matching top with it, but it is a sweater and it never gets cold enough to require it. Uh huh. So, anyway. Uh, I hope some people hanging out are coming to RTX. Uh, it'll be awesome to see you if you are. There's a bunch going on. If you get the RTX app, you can see where everybody at Funhouse will be. I'm excited for that 30 more minutes panel. I hope people show up. I'll be there. Will you? I put it added to my schedule. Oh, I hope people come. Um,. And Ship Hits has a panel, too, which is probably going to be pretty exciting. Wet. It's going to be a jam-packed weekend. Mm-hmm. A lot of stuff. And, yeah. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, have a, an awesome weekend. And enjoy the rest of your week. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll see you very soon. Bye. Ciao, Bella. Ciao, Bella.